He began his evangelical ministry at 16 years old. Put your hands together for Pastor Gabriel. <laughs> Amen. Hey, you can do better than that. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Well, Pastor Gabriel, I'm just excited. You just heard the last segment. Yes. Uh, God, I believe that we're in such a divine season. It, it is a time where God is moving with great power, and there's a generation in need of God. Hallelujah. Yes. And I just want to ask you, as a young man, what drove you into ministry? Honestly, what drove me, Pastor, was the passion of Christ. You can't be passionate about something until you know uh, the cause or the reason for the passion. And mm. it was the passion of Christ that drove me to be passionate about him. Let me tell you a little bit of uh, uh, background. I, I come from a humble home um, of Puerto Rican parents. Amen. And br right here in, in the city in Brooklyn, New York. Um, and I was raised there uh, in a Christian home. But though I was in a Christian home and I went to church, I didn't know the God of the church. Wow, come and on. So, and so what eventually happened is, is that when I reached around age 13, 14, I started asking myself, I'm here and I hear about God that heals, but I haven't experienced his healing. Wow. I'm here and I, and I see a God that transformed lives, but I haven't experienced it. So speaking with my father, he told me once a story that he was at a prayer vigil. And in that prayer vigil, God used someone in the prophetic and spoke to him and told him, your grandmother is sick right now. And no one knew that. She wasn't confessing it to anyone. She was lying in bed that night with pain in her back and her body. Come and on. he said there, they gave him a word and said, read her this psalm from the Bible and pray over her and she's going to be healed tonight. He wasn't fully sure. So he went home running, told his grandmother, he said, uh, abuela, you know, grandmother, uh, eh, is it true that you have this in your body? She said, yes. So he read the scripture, he prayed over her and she got healed. So I said, you know what? I want to know that God. Come on, come on. He prayed for yeah. her. He prayed for her. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And she got healed. It's about time we go back to prayer and believe that God is healing today. Hallelujah. Yes, yes. yes. Hallelujah. Yes. So I said, I want to know that God. I need to know that God. So I started uh, trying to pray. Now, now if, for some uh, people, they find prayer to be difficult because they say, I'm praying to someone that's invisible, someone that I do not see. Um, so I said, I start, I'm just going to start praying five minutes. Lord, I just want you to become real to me. If you're real, I want you to become real to me. So yeah. I got up during my high school years at five in the morning every day. Now, this is going to sound funny. It's not easy to wake up that early to pray. <laughs> Come uh, on. Uh, let's be Come real. On. Let's be real. Come on. So I, I, back in the day, now I'm in my early 30s, but back in the day, they had something called tape. You, you remember that tape okay. cassette? It wasn't okay. CD, it wasn't an iPod, it wasn't... Right. Yeah, 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 yeah. You yeah, put yeah. in a tape. I, I will put in a tape with fast fast Christian music, worship music, and I'll wake up, doom, 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 and I'm like, I'm up, I'm up, I'm up. <laughs> Glory <laughs> to God. Glory. And I would get up, take a shower, and go pray, and begin to seek the Lord. And eventually, what I began to experience was that when I would get up from prayer, the peace that I lacked, now I had. The strength that I lacked, now I had. The healing that I needed, now I had. Wow, come on. The change that I needed, now I had. So God began to, to manifest his power in school, in, in, in relationships, at, at work. I would experience God telling me things and, and, and guiding my life. And so I said, this God is real. And, and so I just kept pursuing God. And mm. as I sought God's direction, God began to open doors and develop a timid, shy person into the person of God that he's allowed me to be today. Wow. You know, I, I tell you that, that God is raising young people today as, as the dean of a college. You know, I'm seeing the glory of God like never before. Yes. See, because I believe with all my heart, the Bible says this. See, when you go into the prayer closet, mm -hmm. praise the Lord, your prayer closet. See, that's the time. We're, we're trying to go into somebody else's closet mm -hmm. without going into our own closet mm -hmm. for God to clean right. our mess. That's right. Amen. We're, we're trying to clean somebody else's closet yes. instead of getting our closet clean. Yes. Amen. But the Bible says that when you go into the prayer closet, mm -hmm. that Jehovah God is waiting for us mm -hmm. there. Yes. Amen. So I believe with all my heart that that is what you were experiencing. I would like you to elaborate. You said 
that as you pray, the peace that was missing, yes, all of a sudden appeared in your life. Yes. So explain that yes, a little let, bit. Let me explain that a little bit more because in my junior high school years, um, I started going to some, through some things in school. Um, I experienced uh, uh, some people that went different, uh, some people that uh, backstabbed me or left me to the side. I, I went through a moment where I had a hernia and went through some physical illness. And on top of that, I eventually began to enter that point in my life where you begin to question, what is God's purpose for your life? In that, I eventually got to the point of considering committing suicide. Which is, wow. which is crazy being in a Christian home. And there's a lot of young people yes, dealing with that there's today. a lot of young people dealing with that. But in the midst of that, there was always a couple of things that, that, that kept me back. First of all, the love of a family. Amen. And the fact that I, I truly believed God did love me, and I just wondered or felt like God was speaking to me and telling me, uh, if you just hold down a little longer, everything's going to turn around. Come on. Come on. Just, Amen. Just, a little, just, just a, little, a little bit longer. Just a little longer. Hallelujah. Just a little longer. So when I began seeking God, I experienced uh, the joy of his salvation that the Bible promises Amen. us. Amen. That peace. So now uh, you walk with a confidence and, and, and God begins to reveal his purpose for your life. And as you begin to walk in it, there is no need to ever, ever, ever again have I ever considered. Doesn't matter what struggles I've been through. Doesn't matter if there hasn't been finances at some moment. Doesn't matter if I've been sick. Never have I said, I'm just going to leave God. Never, Amen. never, never, Amen. never, never, never. Because once you have life and once you know something, you can't unlearn it. Ah, come you, on. You can't, you can't go back you from can't where go God back. took you out of. There's, there's that story of Moses where, where God uses Moses to teach the people, I brought you out of Egypt. Don't stay with the mindset of Egypt. You can never go back to where I brought you out from. You need to now go through the desert. Go through the desert, yes. And, 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 and your faith... Your faith in the desert will be tested. Your faith in the desert will be tested. You will have to learn what it is, a God that provides, a God that heals, a God that delivers you from the Come hands on. of your enemies. And once you learn that, God says, I'm processing your character and developing it so you can enter into a new season, a new land, something that flows milk and honey, Come something on. of blessing that I have for you. You can't go back. You can only you go, can't go back from glory to glory. Well, you know, even... even Egypt, you know, when they left Egypt, mm -hmm. the, the Bible says that they left with the riches of Egypt. That's right. And though they wanted to go back to Egypt, they never went back. Praise mm -hmm. the Lord. Amen. Now, it took about 40 years to clean Egypt out of them, mm. but eventually God got it out of them right. because God will keep you in the wilderness mm -hmm. until you get clean That's right. so that you could go into the promised land That's right. and not contaminate the new land that God is about to That's give right. you. That's right. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Uh, I tell you that, I find that so powerful because, you know, oftentimes you hear young people, and, and I believe that Christianity... We've allowed, especially in the charismatic movement, those of us that believe in Pentecost and believe the fire of the Holy Ghost, we've allowed ourselves to drift so much into uh, self-help and psychology that we've left those basic principles mm -hmm. of prayer, mm. fasting, mm. seeking the presence of God, and believing that God could give us what we were lacking. That's right. Now, share a little bit of the signs and wonders that are being manifested through your ministry. So as God uh, began to direct me into a preaching ministry, um, the first thing that happened was an opportunity open for a mission trip. Amen. And um, this, this lady had the vision of taking a few youth to impact that generation in Nicaragua. So I went. I went with a friend of yours, Pastor Christian. Amen. And as we went... There was something that we realized. We experienced, first of all, poverty to a whole nother level that we had never experienced before. But we also experienced that people were such a need that counseling, psychology, or none of those things, which are good and have their place, would not function for that particular crowd. Many of them, uh, none of them had insurance, health insurance, or, or ability to go to a hospital. So we found ourselves in the midst of, of, of a crowd of people that were without shoes, and, and the place got full. It got full of people because we had nurses and doctors and people helping throughout the day. So at night, everyone came to see what else they're going to give us. 
and we gave them Christ. So when we went to preach, we, we started, we started, yeah, yeah, silver we and gold. We gave them Christ. That's right, that's right. We can only give the medicine and, and, and so much of the resources, but uh, uh, Peter says, silver and gold I do not have, but what I have I give unto thee. Come on, come on. In the name of Jesus Christ, rise come up and rise walk. Rise up, come on. So we started praying in a room, and we said, God, you got to do something here, or, or these people are, are going to die uh, 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 in their sickness, and, and maybe not even get to know who you really are, the, the God who gives abundant life. So we started praying, and what happened the first night is as I'm preaching, I'm speaking about the woman with the issue of blood. She's been 12 years. No doctor's been able to help her, on, been able on. to supply her need. And suddenly I, I, I call people up for prayer. When I call people up for prayer, only one woman comes up. I said, as a preacher, you get scared. You say, well, did, did I preach right now? <laughs> people don't see <laughs> Was my preach okay? Yeah. Come on. But suddenly the Lord put a word in me of healing, and I began to, to say, the Lord heals you right now. Without getting close to her, she fell on the ground, trembling. And then the Lord gave me a word for the children. He said, call all the children. I said, Lord, all the children? All the children came up, and just tell them I have a gift for them. Now, I, I didn't know what to expect, what kind of gift God is going to give them, but I said, the Lord has a gift for you. When I began to say, raise your hands and receive it, suddenly all the children began to be filled with the Holy Spirit of God. Come on, come on, come on, come you on. Saw, you saw children falling on the ground, laughing, smiling, crying, filled up the Holy Ghost. When that happened, it got to such a degree that Myself, Pastor Christian, a couple of other ministers, every time we wanted to go pray for someone, we didn't even get to pray for them because they fell on the floor before we even got to them. Wow. And as we began to experience that, we began to hear people that got healed, people that got delivered, and people just kept coming forward and saying, we need Jesus, we need Jesus. And because of that, because of that, I've continued to preach, and God has allowed me to go to 10 different countries preaching because that brought a passion in me to say, God, if you did it in Nicaragua, you could do it Come in on. South America. You Come could on. do it in Europe. You could do it in Asia. You could do it in the U.S. You could do it in New York City. Wow. God is the same yesterday, today, and forever. And forevermore. And, and I tell you, you know, you know as, as you're sharing, and I think the audience has to understand this. See, there's a difference between a service and a calling. Mm -hmm. See, a service, you can quit whenever you want. Mm -hmm. As a matter of fact, you could even tell someone, my time in this ministry is up. Right. I'm going to transfer this service. You could do it. Mm -hmm. But a calling, yeah, you can. as a young man, as yourself, see, a calling, you didn't choose you yourself. You no. didn't pick yourself. All you had to do was tell God, God, God I'm available. I'm a, that's send right. me that's wherever right. you want to send me, God. That's right. And I will do the calling for which you called me. And even in the moment that you're thinking of giving up, you have the Jeremiah experience. Come on. Where there's a fire shut up in your bones. They say, I'm not going to speak about God. Come on. People don't want to hear about it. But God begins to work in you where you just say, I can't give up. It doesn't matter if you're tired and you need to have some Starbucks. But you go because the God <laughs> is working. Am I speaking wow. to somebody Come today? On. Come on now. Come on. You know, and like you said, you need to go. See, that's the problem. God told us go and do the great commission, yes. but in churches, it's become the great omission. Mm. We're doing everything but going. Mm. But, oh, man, I feel the fire of yeah. the Holy Ghost. Come on, Pastor. God is raising young men that are going and saying, I am going to do what God has called me to do, but not empty-handed. That's right. I'm going to go with demonstration yeah. of the power yes. of the Holy Ghost. Yes. Hallelujah. 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 I, I tell you, you know, I, I, I hear you speaking and I get excited yes. because as a young man, you know, how do you make that decision, you know, where so many kids are looking at artists and they're looking at different celebrities to follow. Mm -hmm. And here you are, a young man in the pursuit of the heart of God to do ministry. How did that come about? It, it's, it's just about Jesus. It, 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 you could be celebrated, but there's no one greater that we could ever celebrate than <laughs> Jesus himself. Listen. Come on. You can have money, mansions, fame, but not have eternal life. Not have eternal you life. You can have everything this world offers, but there's nothing greater than to have Jesus. I always say you can lose everything. You can lose what God allows you to have or what God gives you or blesses you with, but never lose the giver. Never lose the giver. See, see people, when, 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 when Christmas time comes around, sometimes 
They, they, they forget, and if you don't get the shirt their size or you don't get exactly what they asked for, they get upset. This is not what I asked for for Christmas. This is not what I want because they're getting so caught up in the gift that they forgot that the blessing really is the fact that by grace, by grace, they gave on. you a gift. They gave you a and gift. And when you understand that everything you have belongs to the Lord, how can you not dedicate it to his service? See, Samuel had to understand that Samuel was raised in church. But he had not heard the voice of God. But when he heard the voice of God, Come on. he really began to understand what it really was to be dedicated in the service, not only within the sanctuary, but to minister and not just be a priest, but be like a people of influence that influence in this world. Amen? Amen. Amen. And, and I believe that it's time for us to grab our influence. Mm -hmm. You know, as young men, it's time to stand up and say, you know what? Silent no more. Somebody has That's to right. speak in the midst of darkness. What takes darkness out is That's right. light. That's right. And if we are the light, why are we not That's preaching right. with the authority That's to right. remove darkness? That's right. Amen? I, I just think that God is calling us to such a divine time. Mm -hmm. You know, if you were talking to a young person today, mm -hmm. you know, that is thinking of going into ministry, mm -hmm. what would you tell them? There is a primary calling and a secondary calling. And sometimes we interpret calling as, the, as just calling in, in, in the sense of ministry. But it all starts with a relationship with Christ. Amen. The moment you lose sight of that, you can, I mean, and I've had this opportunity. This has happened to me. I'm sure it's happened to you. You can get so busy doing ministry that it becomes so exhausting the, the work you're doing, that, that you begin to become frustrated, suffer anxiety, stress, because you want to help so, so many people, but you're not the Messiah. You have a Messiah complex, believing you could save everybody. Right, come on. But you can't. You so can't. So in that moment, you need to remember, it all goes back to not, not worrying about what doors will open, not worrying about who invites me, who doesn't invite me, not worrying about how good you look on TBN, amen. Come on, it, it, come it, on. <laughs> <laughs> but... Jesus said, Jesus said, come and follow me and I will make you fishers of, of men. men. In order come to on. be a fisher of men and reel people in and help people, you have to first come follow him. Amen. 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 And, and I think that that's what God is telling the young people. You know what? It's time to rise up. You know what? There's a calling in you. And it's time for you to say, I'm going to rise up and do what God has called me to do now. I believe in miracles now, not tomorrow. Your miracle is coming today. Your miracle right. is not coming tomorrow or next week. I'm believing for your miracle to take place today in the name of Jesus. I want you to take the next 30 seconds and pray to that screen. Somebody that needs healing, somebody that needs a breakthrough is going to receive it right now in Jesus' Amen. name. Father God, we thank you for your presence. Yes, we Lord. thank you for who you are. We thank you because you continue to be not just a God, but the King of kings and the Lord of lords. Everything is under your feet. And because everything's under the, your feet, you have given us dominion and put every devil, every fear yes, under our feet. Lord. Father God, in the name of Jesus, I believe you lift up yes, a generation Lord. with Amen. power. You're not a respecter of age. You're not a respecter, Lord, of, of, of different races. You're not a respecter of nation yes. or color, Father God. You can use anybody, Lord. You can use Josiah as you can use, Lord God, Caleb, Father God, in the name of Jesus, I pray that you lift yes, up a generation. And right now, if you're sick, I believe God brings healing to your life. If you're, if you're down, I believe God picks you up. Right if you need a financial breakthrough, I believe you receive it in the name of Jesus. Receive what the Lord has for you today. God loves you. He in has not Jesus finished name. with you yet. Don't give Amen. up on your family. Yes. Don't give up on your dreams. Yes. Don't give up on God because God has not given up on you. Hallelujah. Come on, put your hands together and get God the glory.